Hello, finally getting ready to do the video I said I was going to do a couple weeks ago, but I've been very busy. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. Um, this is the lunch bag tote. My printer size is letter size, so I have to print multiple sheets for, the, for those that have a smaller printer. It is possible. I'm by no means a professional, but I get what I get done. So I will show you my way and, of course, do take from it. I hope it helps a lot of people. I have a Cameo 3 and I use Silhouette Design, of course, and I have the Pro um, Edition. Okay, let's get started. I, I have a template here. And I'm not sure how I got the template. I probably found a picture of the tote and bought it into Silhouette and etched it out to this right here. So what I do is I have my template here, right? So you can go and merge and pick your, your image and it'll, it'll come up here. Okay, once they come here, you have your image. Okay, so what I do, I'm gonna make this blank so that you can see what I'm talking about. So, this is a blank template, right? So, what you do is you bring your image over the template, which I kind of already resized it. Let me just resize it down. So, you take your template and your design, and you just bring your template over into the design to fit make sure you cover the whole design you don't have to cover it out like that or whatever but just make sure that all the edges are covered and then you can adjust this to how you want it like if you want this in the center you can probably bring that up you know so more of the the buckle can be down lower but you know once you spread the image out you're gonna it's you know it's gonna look a little different, okay? So just keep that in mind when you're sizing your images. So here I'm gonna take it back down to my image. I'm gonna try to center it as best as I can. And that looks good. Let me see how much I have extra, yeah. Got that there. And I come over and make sure this side is covered pretty good. Make sure the top is covered. And now I'll check the back, the bottom. So they all look, it's all covered, okay? So now what I do is I, first of all, duplicate your image just in case you mess up and you cut it down and blah, 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 blah. And you, so I just always duplicate my image to have one on the side just in case I need it. So what I do here is I select both. You have the image in the back. So when you just pull over, when you just drag over your, your mouse, it's gonna select both images. Go to File, no, I'm sorry, go to Object, go to Modify, and then go to Crop. And then now you have how your image, this is how your bag is going to look. Okay. So because I have only a, a letter size printer, I have to print multiple pictures. So what I do at this point is I try to see how to print with less paper. And sometimes you have to print four or five sheets of paper when you're doing big images. And I'm trying to cut it down to no more than four sheets of paper I need. So here you see I have my settings here already. And that is um, the Auto Cameo, Cameo Matte. My matte is 12 by 12. And my media size is letter size. So I have also print, I'm sorry, print border checked. So that here I can see my print line. Here you see your print line. Okay. 
So now what I do is I try to adjust, see how I want to print my image. Rather, I want it to print it upright this way, or I can turn it and print this way. So you have to decide on what's comfortable for you. I'm going to see what I want to do and then I will be back. Okay, I think I'm going to go with doing it this way, which I haven't done before. I will usually turn my images to the side, usually turn them this way, but we're going to go this way today. So what you need to do is locate your print border. My print border is here. That's my print border. You want to put as much of that image in that border as you can. Now, you can see, let me scoot it over here. You can see where the line is. See that? Everything inside this box is going to print. So, I have bleed on. You don't need bleed on, but I always just tend to put it on anyway. It's not going to hurt. So, I'm going to print this image here. And so, how I print is file, print. Go to my sublimation printer. And I go to preferences, which with this printer, you don't have any color profile, nothing. But I make sure that my paper is photo matte. Okay, click apply. And before I print, you want to mirror your image. Not mirror it, but flip it horizontal. So you can right click the image, go to flip horizontal, and your image is flipped. Okay. Now we are ready to print. I always go back and check. That's just a habit of paper quality. Make sure photo mat is checked. Apply and then I print. Once it finished loading up, what I do is I get my second print ready so that they can just print out. And I'll show you how to do that once it's loaded. Okay, now my printer is printing. So now what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to hit shift and I'm going to arrow over the image. And all you want to do is make sure that your image is inside the print borderline, right? So remember earlier, this is the border, right? You see the border here? This is my line right here. So I just want to make sure that my image is inside. It's what you call overlapping. So I have all my image inside. Now I'm going to print. And once that gets printed, I'll do the next one. Okay, now what I'm going to do is print the bottom. So in order to print the bottom, I'm going to turn the paper because if I do it this way, then I, I, I will have to print two more sheets. So in order for me to avoid that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the paper. Well, really, either way it go. I have to do two sheets just to get the bottom. So that's the only thing that sucks about having a smaller printer. Because mm. I printed them this way, so 
I have to print two here and two here just to get the bottom. So let's do that. Now I'll be back once both of those are printed because it's the same. You take and you move it inside the image. I mean inside the print border. Same as we did with the other two images. So I'll be back after those two are printed. So I decided to slice the bottom of my plate, of my um, template. Instead of wasting paper and having to print two more sheets to fill the bottom, what I did was I took this image and I just sliced the bottom part of what I needed and I put it on two, I put it on one sheet. So I duplicated it, I put the top here and the bottom here. And you'll see one, what I'm talking about once I get it all together. I can't show you now because it's still loading. And so once it print, then we're going to get to the fun part of piecing the puzzle together. Okay, I hope I can catch all of this on the card. So you have your left side. right side and you have your bottoms so now at this point let's see if I can get a better angle here at this point you want to determine which side is going to go on top okay because you're going to have to cut either this side of white off or this side of white off. It really don't matter. I guess it just depends on how much overlap it is. And so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it this way. So what I'm going to do is cut this white off. And so if you all like this video, please like, like it and share if anyone needs to know how to do this because I have not seen this type of video on the totes. You want to make sure all the white is trimmed off. I see a little white here. I'm just going to trim that off. Even if you cut more, you have a lot of this image, so it doesn't matter. You just want to really make sure that all the white is off. Okay. So this is how you piece the puzzle together to make a bigger image. Basically, you just line it up to where it is seamless. Just like that. See that? You cannot tell where the paper meets. And that is how you put the image together to make it bigger. So what I'm going to do, normally you would tape here. Some people cut this access, in this extra off. I deem it not necessary, but it is also good because you can always use this, this part of the image as well. You can put the rest on a wrist lid or keychain or something so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna line this up i'm not gonna tape anything down together until i am definitely sure on how i am going to do this so that is done and so now I'm going to cut the bottom half 
I'm just gonna, I don't know why it printed like this, which is strange, but I'm just gonna cut it because we really only need the curved part of the image anyway. And I'm hoping that one of these images do it for us. So what you do here is line it up and there you have the image okay so let me cut it let me cut it i'm just gonna trim a little bit more off make sure i don't have any white pieces i don't know why that looks doubled maybe that's i don't know how that look double like that I don't like that. So, you see what I'm saying right here? Let's see if the flash. I don't know. This part right here. I don't like that. So, I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to cut it off. Why it printed like that? I have. No earthly idea. It's one good thing about overlapping is you can cut the image up and still have a good piece. See, all the way around it's like that. So, I'm just going to cut all of that off. So, in order for me to do live videos, I have to have a thousand subscribers. <clears throat> so, if you all can help me get to a thousand subscribers so we can do some live crafting. We can craft together. And anything I know, I would not, I would mind sharing. Okay, that looks much better. And so we have that image. 